Hello everyone and welcome to What's Doing, the podcast where we take you into the fascinating world of Malaysian media and entertainment industry. I'm Abid, your host, and today we are joined by one of the most towering figures in Malaysian content landscape, and that is Mr. Ho Hock Dung. Ho is the head of content at Unify TV. Unify TV, which started as just an aggregator of content, has now started producing original content last year, and it was all under Ho's leadership. Today we will be discussing behind the scenes of what happens at Unified TV and how are these original productions taking place and also discuss the challenges and competition in the Malaysian landscape of multiple content platforms. So without further ado, welcome home to What's Doing. Thank you so much for taking time out to to come on the show. Thanks Abi. Yeah, great to to be here and uh, to have a chat with you. Thank you. So tell me about how has your career journey been and how did you land up at Unify TV? Well, it's a very long story. There's a 30 year story. <laughs> we have the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm an accountant um, to start with. Uh, I come from Ipoh. So I was with Deloitte Ipoh. And then the, my first job in care was with Astro Shaw. And I joined them as an accountant. And I realized very fast that I, I love movies. I love the business. So from there, I progressed from being an accountant to a channel manager to, you know, everything. And and everything that I've done leads me up to this post, including uh, with a movie just prior to uh, joining Unify TV. Yeah, so that's how it is. And no longer an accountant now. Uh, <laughs> I think. I know. That was a sad ending to to, to movie, you know. That movie, was, yeah, yeah. They're still around uh, globally. It's yeah. just that the, the local office has been, clo- has been closed, yeah. So that that uh, basically all this was making you ready to come on to to Unify TV. Yeah, yeah, the the whole suite of it from uh, production to uh, channel management to original production to OTTs. Yeah, that that was really helpful. Yeah. So, what inspired you to to a career in in the media and 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 uh, entertainment industry, knowing that you. You started off as an accountant. No, well, it started in Astro Shaw, I think, in the late 1990s uh, when I was working there. And Astro Shaw was uh, producing movies at the time, uh, and there was a Shaw library. And I started to 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 love watching movies. Uh, and then at the time, there's no Netflix, there's no Hulu, nothing, right? And where do we go to get our movie fixed? You know better than I do. <laughs> Some shady places, right? So. Um, but I, I got hooked to uh, movies at first, and then um, the more I get into it, the more I, I, I think uh, I, I love this angular space, uh, TV. Yeah, so yeah, it's just a natural love process of uh, the entertainment arts, especially movies and series now. Yeah. Unified TV has evolved over the years, and uh, how would you describe its journey and its current position in the Malaysian med- media landscape? Yeah, it's been here for what the last 12, 13 years. If you remember uh, Blue Hippo. Yeah. Yeah, there's a hip TV. They started as a hip TV at the time. Uh, yeah, it's a pay TV, a Blue Hippo. But um, as the, the as time goes by, right, uh, the viewership uh, and, and the audience and the consumer habits of watching um, content, the way they watch it, the, the way uh, they pay for it, everything has changed significantly, especially since 2017, 2018 when Netflix first came to Malaysia. So the whole thing has to change. And uh, I joined uh, Unified TV like almost three years ago. So one of my missions is to pivot the whole thing from just a linear channel offering to also integrate streaming apps, like you know the, the likes of Netflix or the world, the view of the world, and combine it into a, a proposition for our customers that's relevant to them. So um, they still want to watch linear. Yeah, 70 over percent of our customers still watches linear TV. Uh, that that is really interesting, uh, but we see the trending that's going to go is going down, but on demand OTT is going up. So we did surveys. Why are you still watching linear TV? You know, you have uh, HBO Go, for instance. Mm-hmm. Why are you still watching the channel? Is it still relevant? Apparently, a lot of people, to a lot of people, they still just want to sit down, relax, and just take it in, right? It's just so tiring to just look for stuff, you know. Yeah. Me myself, for instance, mm. I want to look for a show on Netflix. By the time I look for the show, I'm really sleepy, right? So, 
yeah, that is how it's changing. So that's why linear is still very relevant, but uh, you have to combine it with uh, on-demand and streaming apps to give the customers a lot of, a, a wide choice of entertainment, however they like it. Because I think it's also a behavior thing, right? People are used to watching linear for a very long time. And then the advent of OTT uh, channels have come in. And I think that's where the, the habit forming thing, which has been there for ages, People still prefer that. Some, I mean, I'm talking about some segment yeah. in, in viewership that they still prefer. Especially the older segment for sure. Yeah. Unless you are very sure of what you want to watch. Say, for instance, you are binging narcos, for instance. Mm -hmm. Then every day without fear, you do that. But after that, then you, when you in between shows, yeah. that's the problem. The void. The void, yeah. yeah. The show, the, the void which a good show creates in between shows. Yes. So... What unique features or content offerings uh, are set by Unified TV apart from other platforms which are offering on their platform? Yeah, so our provision now is not just TV. Yeah, so we combined, uh, we have 70 old leading channels. We have uh, all the, 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 the major channels, the HBOs and the B-ins of the world, right? But we also have 20 streaming apps integrated into our system. So when you go to our website, for instance, to have a look, you will see that we have a bundle, say for example, Ultimate uh, Max, right? You have all the full channels for your kids for whatever that is. And you also have eight streaming apps. You get your Netflix, your Disney, your HBO, your View, IT, everything already bundled into one. So, and at a very affordable price, that's only 130 bucks, right? And you get everything. That's, that's how we are going to move forward. And that's how Unify TV is uh, special and different from the rest. Where in Malaysia can you really see this kind of uh, bundles? Mm. But the most important part for Unify TV is not Unify TV. It's Unify. The internet. We the don't look at ourselves as a TV, uh, pay TV provider. We, we do not. Unify TV do not. We look at ourselves as a convergence player. Yeah, because Unify, the, the fixed broadband, we are the leader there. We have 70 over market share. Um, when, for instance, sometimes when you talk to people, do you, do you, do you have uh, internet in your home? A lot of people say, do you have Unify in your home? It's synonymous almost like that, right? So the, the whole idea of Unify TV is how can we play a role in this converged offering where we offer broadband, we offer uh, mobile, mm -hmm. yeah, and we also offer content. We certainly offer lifestyle products, smart homes and gaming. We have Black Nut already integrated, for instance. So to, to give our customers um, you know, a one-top shop for everything. So basically, you, you, you buy the Unify uh, internet package and along with it, you'll get the whole bundle. But that takes me to the next question. Are you saying bundling is going to be big in the coming years? It is definitely going to be big. Bundling, if you ask me to be honest, it's going to be the way forward. Yeah, it's it, a no-brainer basically. Yeah, it's going People to be are also getting tired of buying uh, apps after apps, subscribing to apps after apps. Yeah. But if you're getting a service which has got all the apps in one bundle for a, for one straight price, I think... Yeah, a, in one bill. In right? one bill, yeah. Yeah, and we also have a feature, a switching feature. Uh, definitely first in Malaysia. I'm not really first in the world. I'm not probably, I have no idea. But, you know, let's say for instance, you subscribe to our... Um, and a car pack at 30 ringgit and you get view bundled in there, right? You can switch between our apps, say next day or next month, you say, okay, I've binged everything on view. Now I want to uh, watch something on IT. Then you click switch in your app, Unify app, and you switch to the next app, IT. Then you have done with IT, you switch again to VTV, for instance, and you switch to Z5 or Simply Stuff. You can switch your app around. And at no extra cost, we're not charging anything, it's free. You can switch like that. So the whole idea is we understand the consumer behavior that, you know, in OTT world, you have this thing called 10101. You subscribe one month, then you unsubscribe, unsubscribe. You subscribe again to watch where whatever you have missed. So what we want is to, to get our customers into our ecosystem so that they are sticky to us. Stickiness is important. Yeah, Use our broadband to enjoy content. As long as they stay within our ecosystem, we are very happy with it. So the switching mechanism is very popular within our, our customers. We have 30-40% of them switching all the time. Well, that's, a, that's a great feature actually. Yeah. With so much of options available at this point of time mm. and you know how loyalties are not there from a consumer perspective. Yeah, there's no loyalty. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I think that's, that goes without saying that yeah, that kind of feature really helps you know yeah. retaining your consumers onto your platform. Yeah, yeah. So the media, taking that forward, is like the 
media industry is undergoing a significant digital transformation. Hmm. How has Unified TV embraced these changes and what role do you see it playing in the future of entertainment? Well, to start with, we are digital to start with, right? Because we are IPTV and therefore, um, it's unlike a traditional TV where you, you, you broadcast is a, is a one-way traffic, right? For Unified TV since day one, it has always been a two-way traffic, right? We know exactly who is watching what, what time, you know, we have all those things. You have the data. Yeah, we have it, yeah. So that's how we also, you, you know, use the data um, within, of course, the legal mm. constraints and to, to personalize to our customers, you know, what do they, they like to watch and then we, we service them in that way, right? So in terms of digitalization, we, we are already doing it. Uh, if you look at uh, Telecom Malaysia, it's digital Malaysia as well. Yep. If you look at the big billboards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are in the forefront of, you know, uh, helping Malaysia to digitize to SMEs as well, especially SMEs, uh, how to help them digitize their their, their services, um, and help them to do you know uh, marketing, yeah, uh, social media marketing. So that, that's what we are doing to help. Uh, Malaysia to, to go on the digitization road. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I think that kind of support for, for SMEs at this point in time from, from a big boy like TM, I think that's very much required for the whole digitalization of, you know, for businesses as well, small businesses as well as, you know, uh, the consumers who, who need help. Yeah. We see a lot of um, great results coming out from SME space. Uh, where before, for instance, uh, they have only two two staff, and we help them, and now they go to 10, 15 staff, and, and it's really good for the economy, good for everyone, you know, good for the local economy, good for Malaysia. Uh, that, that's where we are. That's our ambition to, as well to help. So, with the advancement of technology, how has Unified TV adapted to changing consumer preferences and the rise of streaming platforms? Uh, the, the whole thing about streaming platforms is that it can be just too many of them and you get drowned into it. Mm. Like, you know, wow, look at that. There's 30 things, 30 apps. I don't know what to do with it. And so, every one of them is coming up with a new content every week. Yes. How, can, how do I keep track? You know, yeah. it's just tiring. It, it becomes like, you know, I forget it. You know, I'll just switch on my linear TV and just watch whatever that's there, right? So what we are trying to do now is um, to have a platform where we um, consolidate everything, deep link everything, right? All the apps with uh, features like single sign on. For instance, just like I mentioned the ultimate pack, you know, you, you, you subscribe to the pack and you have eight apps. And once you log into our box, the, all the eight apps that you enter to are automatically signed on. And you can just click on the app and watch whatever you want there, right? You don't have to sign on again, sign out again. It is, it is simplified. It's almost like changing channels, right? And they're all deep linked in a way that, you know, number one, uh, we know that, let's say, for instance, you, you like uh, cooking shows. Then the AI will pick up from all these apps and channels as well um, that you subscribe to and recommend to you, oh, this is the best cooking show. So it's more like a personalized... Yes, very personalized, very deep link, universal search to, to give the customers, you know, uh, an easier and more enjoyable time instead of getting drowned in so many things. But that's that's great. Basically, that it's all in one place. You don't have to go around, you know, searching apps and logging in and logging out. And yeah, it's so annoying. Uh, the real case in in uh, on hand uh, when BlackBerry that movie first yeah, came yeah. out. Yeah, it was now it's on Apple TV. It's on uh, a lot of places, right? But when it first came out a few months, I think quite some time back. Yeah, I was trying to look for that film. I can't find it, so I go to Netflix. Not there. HBO, not that. Apple, not that. You know, iTunes, all those. It's not there. But the process of looking for it is painful. Now, imagine I wipe everything out tomorrow. I want to search for BlackBerry. I got a box there. I type BlackBerry. And every place that has BlackBerry comes out. No, okay, it's on Netflix or it's on the Apple TV. Then it's here. Then you click on it. And when you click on it, if you subscribe, you watch. If you unsubscribe, you subscribe now. Click, yes, done. So that the ease of choosing content is is what that innovation has. Yeah, brought. that's where we're going up and using AI for all these uh, personalization that's going to be the future. That's, that's cool. Means 
definitely that saves a lot of time and also the stickiness for your for your viewers that uh, they won't leave mm. and go to any other app and look out for 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 content which they'll want yeah. which they want to watch and we are breaking the silos for instance if you if you know that you're watching a lot of those uh, say uh, the last of us for instance thing recommendation play this game and subscribe to it or if you subscribe play this game now or you know so it, it breaks borders not just video but also lifestyle, also um, uh, gaming, uh, smart homes. You know, there are a lot of um, a lot of uh, since, like last time when we when we mentioned about uh, convergence, we say four P quad pay play right yeah. internet. Blah, blah. Now it's infinity play. It can be anything. So how does Unified TV prioritizes local content, and why do you think it's essential to represent Malaysian culture in the content? You know. Uh, line up you know, in the in the territory where um, local content is important uh, because of local culture. Malaysia is one, uh, Thailand, Philippines, mm. for instance, where the local language, local culture is important. Then uh, the local original productions will be very very important for the local uh, audience. We all know from the industry that you know the the highest viewership, the most sticky stuff are the local stuff, right? So for us, same. Uh, last year we launched a new channel called The Group. The group is in the habit, the group, the group, the group right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a channel just for uh, horror and action only. Um, yeah, recent couple of months is the number one premium channel already, right? Wow. And we are starting a series of original production, local original production um, uh, for the channel, premiering on the channel. Yeah, so it's extremely important. We will continue to invest in local production, um, not just series or movies, but also other things like you know game shows, talk shows, but um, in line with um, the channel population. For instance, for the group, imagine uh, a game show on the group, but it's a zombie thing, game show kind of thing. It can be funky. It's perfect for the channel. Yeah, things like that we will. We will. You just mentioned that it was the number one channel in in premium uh, channel on lineup. TV, yeah. So, can you give us in what category? As in, uh, who all? Where were there in that line of channels where where the group was considered as number one? Oh, we in our lineup of seventy over channels, um, the highest viewership will be the free to air channels. Yeah, your the, the TV twos and TV threes because they are open to everyone, right? That naturally, they were the highest one. Then after that, we would have our premium channels, the likes of uh, Cinemax or TVN Movies or AXN or or the, all those. International movies that BBC, yeah. right? So the group sits on top of all of them, just right below the free to air. So that is an amazing means learning because again, uh, these channels are like been pushing their content like everywhere, and in all of it, the local channel, come, premium channel, comes on top, which is yeah. Every single time, local content, good local content, every single time comes on top. Every single time. So. There is a huge market for local. Huge market, and uh, we we have just floated uh, a pitch session, yeah, just our second one, and we will continue to invest in local production for sure. So, can you share some successful examples for locally produced content that resonated with the audience? Easily, anything by Yasmin Ahmad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about even <laughs> even today. <laughs> even today, it's not so easy to cross uh, ethnicity. Yeah. Say for instance, um, one of the hottest things that came out recently was say for instance, uh, High Council. Yeah. But it's still within that ethnicity. It, it's very hard to cross. Um, or um, maybe something produced by the Chinese uh, pe people. Uh, it's also very hard to cross. Uh, but the recent movie called Abang Ade, if you have watched it, uh, that crossed. Yeah. Across. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That is a Malaysian movie. Although it's in it's, it's, uh, Chinese, but it crossed so well. Oh, it did, so it did. We, we wanted we want to do something like that, you know, because it's very hard to break um, the kind of um, the the silos. Yeah. 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 So in terms of drama series, I'm not really sure. It's pretty much siloed, except for Korean dramas. It's just watch <laughs> Korean dramas. It's pretty sad. It's not local, right? But it's watched by you know. But there is a lot of adaptations also going for the Korean content, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like uh, Black, for instance. Black, W2 Worlds, and you know, from Saga with Love. But do you think there is a big market for, uh, you know, adaptations or, or originals? 
I think for both, yeah, adaptation not just from other drama series but also from books. Webtoons, huge, you know, the, the webtoon, web, webtoons in Korea and in China, it's crazy and and very very interesting. And you see a lot of them being adapted into shows like yeah. Netflix as well, right? So adaptation and originals both goes hand in hand. Yeah, but it's probably easier to do adaptation than original. But uh, I think both will go hand in hand. And what challenges has Unified TV face, and how have these challenges been addressed to ensure continued continuous growth and success of Unified TV? The biggest challenge is people do not know Unified has a TV. <laughs> so basically, education and awareness. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when people talk about Unify, um, yeah, broadband, yes, Unify TV never heard before. They probably heard like what Hip TV, but yeah, that was a long time ago, and probably something that is not no longer. Yeah, but. Yeah, the, the biggest challenge is that, you know, the awareness that um, Unify offers great content as well. And we have 20 apps for you to choose, right? And very affordable prices, right? There's no more reason to go to Pirates because sometimes people go to Pirate because they can't afford or do not want to pay the high price. You're asking them to choose between 200 ringgit and zero. And <laughs> at this times and day, yeah. very bad economy and things like that, right? People most of the time will probably choose zero because you're, they can't afford 200 a month or 100 a month, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is that give them a lower jump of point, 20, 30 ringgit, but great and very convincing con uh, content. Uh, give them apps, full access, right? There's no more reasons to go to the pirates. And we, we see this to be true. In the last one year, right, we see this to be true. People start to come on board on us, yeah. 20, 30 bucks and they, they, they really enjoyed it and, and it's safe and it's one build and it's a brand you can trust, Unify you can trust, right? So, yeah, we, we see that trend. Are there specific opportunities in the media industry that you're excited about exploring with Unify TV? On top of whatever I mentioned just now, the lifestyle style, yeah. I think, um, yeah, one of the, the biggest uh, names or one of the biggest term happening right now is fast channels, yeah, free ad supported. Um, TV, um, but in this part of the world where we have RTM and TV, they are fast. <laughs> Anyways, they are free. It's about TV, right? Our FTA are fast channels. <laughs> yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm not very sure whether you already work here because fast channels, a lot of them are very library content. Um, yeah, still yet to be seen whether they be successful here. The Hulu model, actually. The Hulu model. Yeah, yeah, or, or, or Pluto TV. Yeah, yeah. So. It'll work there, um, but not sure it's going to work here because we have a pretty strong FTA, like Indonesia, right? Super strong FTAs. Yeah. Fast is probably going to be quite challenging. So you mentioned that all these big apps at like HBO Go and Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, uh, you're bundling and putting. How has that bundling worked as as a business model as well as you know, as a revenue? model for unified tv um yeah the bundling of the of the the um, the packs to be honest the, on the streaming apps the margin is extremely slim there's not much margin there um yeah but on the linear side the margin is a lot healthier so when we bundle it together we use the streaming apps to make the proposition convincing and because we do on a partnership basis, we don't have to spend a lot of money to invest in the content. So yeah. we leverage on each other and they leverage on our distribution, they leverage on our customer base. So it's a win-win for them. So for us, we take, uh, we, when we bundle to the linear, um, there's two effects. The first effect is that um, we give our linear base now access to these world-class apps and world-class stories, mm. right? The second thing is that um, we share the margin all right, so we use the linear channels to subsidize the streaming apps a bit in terms of margin. And by doing that, we can afford to lower down the prices and, and give it to our customers at a, at a, a much more lower price point. Um, yeah, that's how it is. So how does Unify TV prioritizes user experience and what measures are taken to keep the audience engaged? Um, the user experience, to be honest, at least today, if I can be honest, it's not really very good because the platform is very old. It's a 12, 13 year old platform, right? So uh, we are now embarking on the, in the process uh, of changing the whole platform. 
Like the whole UI UX. Yeah, the whole thing is going to go. By next year, you will see everything new, right? So we have engaged a lot of people and uh, invested a lot of money to do it this year. So next year, you will see all these new things coming up. Uh, you will see much better user experience, UI UX. Uh, more important than UI UX, maybe it's part of UX, is the buffering, the lag. Yep. Yeah. If people are used to now, you know, instant stainers. And if you click on it and if that thing spins, you will just give up. Yeah, they, they won't stay for long. <laughs> yeah, they will just go and it, and they will, it was terrible. So that is one aspect that we will definitely want to uh, take care of the new platform. So user experience, um, yeah, still some ways for us to go, but uh, it's going to be fixed this year. But as you said, that it's going to change, everything going to change by next year. Are you implementing any interactive or immersive features in it as, um, as part of the view, viewer experience? Yeah, so there, there are other things except for, I mean, besides whatever I said just now about, the, you know, um, being seamless and, uh, you know, personalized. Uh, there are many other areas that we're exploring, like many, many pillars that like I mentioned just now, the, the lifestyle, which includes uh, watching, you know, using VR headsets, for instance, a, a very immersive experience. Yeah. So all those are in the pipeline. Those are really exciting stuff to, to experience. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and yeah, it's going to be amazing. So in what ways Unified TV contributes to building a sense of community among its viewers and, and consumers? I think for Unified TV, it's definitely through uh, whatever you do through originals. But more importantly is Unify itself as the company, right? Actually, Unify is not a company. Unify is a brand. The company is Telecom Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, Telecom Malaysia. Yeah, Unify is... Yeah, yeah. so we do a lot um, to engage uh, Malaysians uh, from, um, say, education. You know, MMU yeah. is yeah, part of Telecom Malaysia. From there to uh, a lot of social engagement and, and uh, a lot of things that we did, like the, the flood the last time, you know. And um, yeah, so young talents, uh, young uh, entrepreneurs, we give them opportunities, invest in them. So there are a lot of things that we do in this space yeah, as, as the company in telecom Malaysia. So that's your basically CSR yes. uh, bit to, to bring the communities together. Mm. And uh, from, a, from a content perspective, are there any steps being taken to, to, to bring all your cons consumer base are you creating any content or are you creating any you know uh, platform where they are engaging on a regular basis yeah. so the original part is where we want to engage local filmmakers um moving forward we are not just doing um you know uh content with established companies uh we will look into uh, student books uh you know mmu like i see just now now we have a program with them to help them you know a, a platform for them to feature their work uh, we have a, a, a slot called uh, Shots, right, where they can feature their work there as well. Uh, we have um, intern programs with, uh, with them, so to train them. And um, also local filmmakers, hmm. right? Uh, there are a lot of local filmmakers, uh, the, the likes of you know, people like uh, Tan Chui Mui or maybe the, the younger ones as well, like Amanda. Yeah, so we are looking at that direction moving forward as well. Um, yeah, so that is engaging local filmmakers and, and local um, production talents, but also in terms of customers' experience, right? In the new platform, uh, we realize there's one thing that people really, really love to do is to comment while they watch something. Yeah. It's crazy. Everybody is a, is a, is a is. you know, uh, they are reviewer yeah. and, you know, critique. Yeah, yeah the, the, everyone is. Uh, Martin Scorsese, everyone is a pro <laughs> and, yeah, So, yeah, they, we realized that they really love to chat while watching TV. When, you know, my age, right, when I, the people of my age, I don't know about, maybe not all, but at least for me, when I watch a film, I want it to be dark and quiet and yeah. I, I enjoy it, you know, I just sit down and wow. Same. Yeah, same, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone t starts talking, will be a shh, 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 right? Quiet. quiet. <clears throat> But the new generation of people, they're not. They like to participate. They like to talk about it. For instance, um, did you watch um, Pendatang on YouTube? Yeah. Right? You'll watch it live that day, right? People are just talking nonsense. Not nonsense. Some of them are really good. But people are just, 
uh, enjoying the chat, enjoying the experience, and they will say this, say that, just enjoying themselves, right? Yeah, some people are uh, really serious. Wow, it should be wow, uh, more professional, more more serious. But most people just want to have a good time, and we think this is going to be the future as well. When we do uh, original productions, for instance, when we premiere, probably we premiere on a place where um, customers can have conversation. Something like a watch party kind of a thing. Yeah, watch party guy. Right? You said that you now that you guys are focusing really, really heavily on 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 local content, and you open up for pitches. So how many times a year do you open open uh, for pitches? Uh, Plays every quarter. Every quarter. Yeah, yeah every quarter. But uh, our focus will be on horror and action. And action, yeah. For the group, the, yeah. for the channel, yeah. It's going to be premiere there. And where can the audiences, or uh, the, the the producers, and the production houses, where can they get all these information to to participate? It's on the TM website. When whenever there's a pitch, we will publish it there, and uh, and of course we we'll reach out to the industry as well. Now, how does Unified TV curate its content? You know, and what criteria are considered when forming partnerships with content creators? Well, we look at the the um, the landscape that we're offering, then usually by genre, do we have enough uh, Western variety? Do we have enough Western movies? Do we have enough uh, East Asian content? Do we have enough kids content, you know? So we look at um, a map and then we plug in whatever we have there. And then we, we look at whatever gaps there are. And then we compare to our peers in the industry, right? So you, let's say, for instance, we compare to what is available on PLDT, what is available on the Indie Home or Star Hub or things like that. And then we identify gaps. And then we will see uh, and ask one very important question. In this age, do we still need this many channels? Do we still need 100 channels in this hmm. age? Our conclusion is no. We don't need 120 channels. Yeah. Yeah. So then we say, then how many is enough? Then from there, we curate our thing based on this philosophy. And then we will say, okay, now maybe 70 or 80 is enough. Maybe 60 is enough. Then we think, is there a chance for us to use streaming apps to plug in things that, you know, probably we, we don't have to, uh, significant gaps. Maybe we can partner with these apps and bundle together and give our customers that whole range of things that they need. So that's our philosophy. That's how we do our programming and curation. Are you excited about any other new uh, content piece which is coming out on Unified TV? The new collaboration which you have done. And the latest one that we're going to, you know, um, yeah, premiere on the nineteenth. Uh, Sick will be sick. Yeah, with Amborizan. So that's amazing. That's on uh, local uh, folk songs. A spin on local folk songs. You know, is is very different. Um, it's original. Yeah, so very excited about that. I'm really looking it's forward to that yeah. one. 19th, uh, uh, this Friday, yeah, 19th of January, 9 p.m. What can audiences expect from Unified TV in the coming years and any exciting developments or plans you can share? Definitely the originals um, that we are going to do. Number one. Number two, the new platform. We are going to invest really heavily in that. We, we look forward to giving our, our customers a great experience uh, to watch your content, like what I said just now. Yeah, and um, we are going to announce a few more new partnerships. That is, first in Malaysia. They are the best in their country, but never in Malaysia. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think, yeah, pretty soon in about two weeks' time, we will announce two new ones, and then subsequently, all, over the year, we would have uh, announcements going on. Oh, that'd be great. I'm really looking forward for that one. So, how does Unified TV plan to stay innovative and relevant in an ever-changing media landscape? It is that process I mentioned just now, right? Uh, looking at our gap. So we don't, we don't just look at it one time and that's it. Yeah, we look at it every quarter and say, yeah, 70 channels, these channels, relevant last quarter. Is it going to be relevant next quarter or the quarter of next? So we, we always look at that and look at the horizon and see uh, what is coming up soon. Right, what is brewing that may have some big potential here. So we are always on the lookout for new stuff um, in the whole world and, and see if they, we can partner with them or work with them. That's, that's really interesting. Coming to my last question and my favorite question, which is the five best content pieces you saw last year? 
last year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. The first one is Abang Adit. I, I think it's really great. I think that has been everyone who has come onto the show. That was a constant among everyone. Everyone loved that. That yeah. That movie. That that is really great. I really love that. Um. Then uh on. On the streaming apps, I watched something on Netflix which I really like. Oh, all the Star Wars stuff on Disney for sure. <laughs> on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, I think um, Ashoka, I like it. Yeah, Ashoka, I like it. Endo. Endo is amazing. Obi Wan is uh, the first four episodes sells. <laughs> yeah, so that for sure. Um, Those are the only stuff. I can't recall. Right, you ask me right now, it's very hard. Uh, yeah, the latest Chinese movie, the Golden Finger. Oh, Golden Finger, I heard is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not ten out of ten, maybe eight out of ten. It's, it's worth watching. With all of that, thank you so much oh, for coming Thanks, and, and talking you. and taking time out and and sharing your views and insights on what's doing. Hope to see Unified TV grow on a on a grander and much more you know uh, collaborative way with the content producers as well as with the local industry and uh, we wish you all the best thank you thank you for inviting us and uh, inviting me and giving me a chance to tell people that unify tv exists <laughs> no the existing called unify tv <laughs> <laughs> no so we we definitely will be putting that and 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 letting everybody know that uh, unify tv is doing some great stuff great thank you so much abhi Thanks, so thank you so much. Right, thanks. Ho's work has been incredible in terms of creating a content model for aggregation and originals for Unify TV, and also integrating content for the overall TM network. I am Abid, and this has been What's Doing. Till next time, keep doing. Mm -hmm.